Hello my YouTubers, welcome to AP World History and today we are going to be looking at how to write a AP World History style comparison essay. So let's start from the beginning. So first let's do a real quick uh, review of the, the, the rubric. The thesis is worth one point, addressing all parts of the question which means you talk about both places under comparison and you talk about similarities and differences uh, counts for two points or one point if you don't get them all. Supporting your thesis with evidence, uh, historical facts and evidence is worth two points or one point if you can't do it fully. Making direct comparisons, usually more than just one, is counted for one point and then an analysis of those comparisons is worth uh, another one point. This leaves us with seven points total. I'm not going to get into the expanded core because that just means that you did everything extremely well. So good for you if you get into the nine point range. So the next thing you have to remember is to read the prompt very carefully, noting any keywords. So you want to look specifically at the two places that are being compared and then the historical factor that is being compared. So in this situation, we're looking at Han China and Imperial Rome during the classical era, and we're looking at trade and economies. So trade and economics is our topic. We can underline, we can circle, we can do anything we need to to remind us of what it is that we're focusing on here. So now we get into our pre-write where we just brainstorm as many similarities and differences as we possibly can for this topic. So I'm gonna make a small table. And on that table, I'm going to put Han China on one side and Imperial Rome or Rome on the other side. This will allow me to then list as many of them as I can quickly and efficiently. So you want to start populating your list as quickly as possible. I'm starting with the similarities because that's where I'm going to have to do anyway to get similarities. So I remember that they both used the Silk Road to transport goods. They both grew things and it was important for them to farm as part of their economy. And both of them traded with India. So that's my quick brainstorm for similarities. Uh, then I start looking at differences. Now for differences, it's not necessary, but it's always helpful to try to look for an opposite statement for each difference. So for instance, on my Han Chinese side, I said used less slaves, but that's only because on the Rome side, I saw that they had relied on slavery. So that makes an opposite where I can make a direct comparison. I've also got that merchants were held at a low status in China, which means they held a somewhat higher status in Rome. The Chinese grew rice as their main grain, the Romans grew mostly grapes and olives as their main grain within the empire, and the Han Chinese uh, produced the most luxurious goods, silk being among the highest ones, which is why the Silk Road was called the Silk Road, and that the Romans desired these Chinese goods, so that put them at the opposite end of the trading spectrum. Next, I want to write an essay that is going to go to my strong side, and so I'm just going to pick the comparisons that for me are going to be the easiest to write about. So. For my three differences, I picked the silk being the luxury items, the merchants being held at a higher low status, and then um, the use of slaves for both. And for my similarities, I picked that they were both on the sil silk road and that farming was an important part of their economy. So now I turn these similarities and differences into a thesis statement. So I start by listing some of the uh, similarities. During the Classical Age, both Han Dynasty and Imperial Rome relied on intense farming. And they both participated in trading items along the Silk Road network. However, China had more luxury goods, such as silk, relied less on slave labor, and gave a lower status to merchants. So a few things about the thesis statement. If it's more than one sentence, that's perfectly okay. If you have to split your thesis over two sentences, do it. Three sentences is okay. As long as you have a thesis statement that addresses both similarities and differences for both places, you're fine. Next, make sure that you're using very clear comparative language. So in mine, I put here um, both to show a similarity or two similarities and however to show that I was talking about differences. Finally, make sure that your thesis statement is using the same language that the prompt is using to show that you're talking about the same topic. This will guide you and it'll alert the reader to know that you're talking about uh, the exact topic that you're supposed to be. So now I've got my thesis statement. I'm going to put my thesis statement at the end of my introduction. I want to introduce my topic just to make sure that I put myself in the right place. So my introduction is going to say, 
During the Classical Age, major civilizations began expanding their economies to fit their growing populations. They even became connected through trade and exchange. Imperial Rome, a large empire in the Mediterranean, and Han China, the largest empire in the East, had many similarities and differences in trade and economics. One of the biggest mistakes that students make is they just leave their thesis statement or their intro just like this instead of adding their thesis right on the end. So here, put the thesis right on the end of this and you have a complete thesis statement. You have to let the reader know exactly what you're going to be arguing and exactly what you're going to be talking about in your essay. In the thesis, the reader will be looking for a valid similarity and a valid difference about both of these places. And so as long as you've done that, then you should score the point for the thesis. You don't have to go into huge detail in your thesis, but you do have to make some clear points so it's clear exactly what you're going to be arguing. And by giving as many similarities and differences as possible, you give yourself the best chance at getting points. Now the great thing about a good thesis statement is it organizes your entire essay. You now have the organizational system to write all your body paragraphs. You have two similarities, and that's two body paragraphs. And then you have three differences, which can also be three body paragraphs, if you just turn those similarities and differences into topic sentences. So it doesn't really matter where you start, but your first body paragraph has to have a topic sentence where you're using one of the comparisons that you identified. It can be a similarity or a difference. Just pick one and go with it. Style doesn't count here. So after you've picked your topic for comparison, write it as a topic sentence, and then come up with as much specific evidence as you can to support that comparison. So if it's a similarity, talk as much as you can about those similarities. This is where you provide as much factual information as you can. Vocab words are perfect here that you can throw in and use as examples. So while you're bringing in your evidence, you want to be comparing both societies directly using comparison words. If it's a similarity, use things like similarly or likewise, or in addition to, also, both, etc. If you're comparing uh, some sort of a difference, say, as opposed to, or unlike, on the other hand. Meanwhile, style doesn't really matter, but vary the way that you say things to keep the essay a little bit, uh, give it a little bit of flow. Then you got to get into some analysis. An analysis is just a fancy way of saying answer the question why or how are they similar or are they different and use analytical language. When you tell somebody why or how you say because. So use the word because or say the reason for the similarity or due to the fact that this happened this is what happened as a result. This is showing that you understand cause and effect, that you understand uh, reasons for historical processes and comparisons. So this should show Show them why these things happened. Now after you're done, that, if you've done that for one topic, just go to the next topic, write your topic sentence, and continue. You do the same exact process for each body paragraph. So let's do a quick example from the thesis statement that we already wrote. Let's take the line, relied on less slave labor, and let's write a topic sentence for that paragraph. We come up with the very simple topic sentence, Han China relied less on slave labor than the Romans during the Classical Age. So we come up with a paragraph that looks something like this. Han China relied less on slave labor than the Romans during the Classical Age. As Rome began expanding after the Punic Wars, they gained more territory and people. Some of these people became slaves, mostly to do farm work and grow grain for the empire. They had no rights under Roman law, and they were considered necessary. China, on the other hand, did not go through the same type of expansion and relied on peasant farmers to do most of the labor. The reason Rome used slaves was more was because they gained a very large empire very quickly, while China had been a large empire since the Qin Dynasty. Rome also borrowed the idea of slaves from the Greeks, who used them extensively. So we can see from the blue underlining where the evidence is, expanding after the Punic Wars, gaining territory, uh, doing farm work to grow grain for the empire, slaves having no rights and considered necessary, and that China used peasant farmers instead of slaves. Now we look for our direct comparison, and there it is. China, on the other hand, did not go through the same type of expansion and relied on peasant farmers to do most of the labor. This shows that instead of slaves, they used peasant farmers. And then we have our analysis. The reason Rome used slaves was because they gained a very large empire very quickly, while China had been a large empire since the Qin Dynasty. And I tried again, Rome also had borrowed the idea of slaves from the Greeks who used them extensively. This answers the question, how or why did Rome use slaves and China didn't? So 
repeat that as many times as necessary for topic sentences. Some reminders, you don't need a conclusion. Unless you need to change your thesis at the end, you can write, this is my conclusion, and write a new thesis. Write as many body paragraphs as you come up with, but three to five body paragraphs is usually pretty, pretty good for coming up with enough evidence, comparisons, and analysis. Uh, evidence, get as many pieces of solid factual evidence as you can that support your thesis statement. The more the better. Uh, you never know how much you're going to need, but usually 7 plus will get you up into the top scoring range for evidence. For direct comparisons, usually more than 2. 2 or more will usually be safe side, so I would go for 3 direct comparisons in your paper. And then for analysis, try as many as you possibly can. Just remember every paragraph, have I tried to answer the question, how or why is this the case? So always try. You usually need uh, 2 or more in order to get that point. The final piece of advice that I have to give you on the comparison essay and on every essay is to try your hardest. You might think you know nothing about this topic, but you probably know a little bit more than you think. And if you can come up with just a few good points, then you score a couple of points, which is going to be better than some of the other kids who didn't do anything. So try. You'll never meet the reader. The reader will never know who you are. So just give it your best shot. Don't forget to be awesome. I'll see you next time.